So, here is a true story. The day that I finished and uploaded my review of the Denifrips Terminator, the doorbell rang and FedEx dropped off this guy. The Holo Audio Maydac. Eager to do a quick comparison, I plugged this guy into the same rig I used for the review of the Terminator and within a short time of listening, I thought to myself, okay, so maybe there is another level to chat about. Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron. If you are into two-channel audio, consider yourself an audiophile or music enthusiast. Welcome home. Make sure you hit this. You know what? I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. There's no doubt about that. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're doing great here at New Record Day, and I'm so pleased with the support that you guys continue to give to us. I'm going to give a shout out to a new channel that I think you should honestly subscribe to and check out. It's kind of like you take away the production value of New Record Day and everything being out of focus, super blurry, I know you guys love that. You take away the good looks and charm of Joshua Valor. You take away the intelligence and the thought behind DMS and his reviews. You take that away. You take away the vast experience that Sean from Zero Fidelity has. You take that away. You take away the really cool shirts from Steve. The audiophiliac. I know I'm missing some people out there and I apologize. Uh, Thomas and Stereo, you take away the stories and the friends. <laughs> the fri <laughs> Thomas and friends. You take away all of that and what you're left with is cheap audio man. Being serious, I've gotten to know Randy over the past couple of days. He's a great dude and he's doing a great job with his channel. He's gonna pop off. There's no question in my mind that channel is gonna grow very fast. And his game plan is anything under $500, he's gonna tackle and he's gonna check it out and he's gonna give you his thoughts and opinions about those speakers and amps and how all of those things perform. And that's not what we are talking about today. We're talking about a $5,000 DAC. So if you're one of those folks that is like, are you, are you insane? Yes, I am, I am insane. And you wanna check out a channel that is more about the really affordable stuff, then check out Cheap Audio Man. He's great. All right, back to business. So in today's video, New Record Day takes on what I believe is a DAC that you should consider buying under the $5,000 price bracket. And based on what I am hearing, a genuine benchmark for R2R topology. Before we get started, folks, today's video sponsor, Audio Art Cable, is reminding you all they are not just a cable company and offer a wide range of fantastic products worth checking out. For analog purists, Audio Art handles the entire range of Riga tables and phono amplifiers. For those looking for integrated and power amps, they also offer the lineup from Dan's gear. And last, for those that are inclined for a new set of speakers, Rob also has a nice selection of triangle hi-fi speakers. But this week, Rob has also secured a couple of new brands and products that are surely worth mentioning as well. For folks interested in the A-Series from Spendor or Hi-Fi components and servers from Silent Angel, Rob is a guy that you're gonna wanna talk to. I'll make sure I leave his contact information and the links down below. Last but not least, Rob wanted to wish you guys a holiday greeting, sending well wishes to you and your families. As always, folks, please join me in thanking AAC for the sponsorship and make sure you bookmark the information down below. All right, guys, just a reminder, we do have some exclusive Patreon videos ready to rock and roll. And in this episode, I dive deeper and compare this deck with other decks that I've heard in house. If that's something that you might be interested in, all the information that you need to sign up is in the description box down below. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. We're gonna dive into a visual demonstration. Before we do, I'm gonna leave some timestamps. So if you wanna skip the visual demonstration and move on to the rest of the review, all the time stamps are down below. So you can move around and do what you want. But visual demonstration, go. Thinking long and hard about how to unpack this review, I have decided to kick things off with a little visual demonstration as to what I've experienced in my time 
with the MADAC. I think what I'm going to show you will help illustrate what we will be talking about when it comes to the time domain, detail retrieval, DK structure, and all things related to harmonic overtones. When it comes to listening to music or hearing anything at all for that matter, it's important to understand this fact that the human brain can only focus on one thing at a time. If you don't believe me, try it for yourself. Play something back on your system and focus on something specific, like the vocals. Now, as you critically listen to the vocals, try to give the same amount of attention to something else, like one of the instruments being played. And remember, try to hear both at the same time with the same level of attention. Let me guess, you can't, can you? I know, it's totally wild. Now, keeping this in mind, let's try a little exercise to help us better understand what the MADAC is truly capable of. Taking a look at this footage, I need you to focus your attention on this little blue Christmas ornament. For this little exercise and knowing what we just learned about being able to focus on one thing at a time while listening to music, let's just pretend that little blue ornament is the sound of David Gilmour's electric guitar in the famous Comfortably Numb solo from the wall. As we critically listen, we can clearly hear the fundamentals, meaning we know it's an electric guitar and we know where it sits in the mix and we know that it's distorted and that's about it. Now, keep your eye on that little blue ornament and focus your attention on it. Keep focusing, keep looking at it. And now folks, something is different. You are still focused on this one subject, but all of a sudden, what surrounds the fundamentals are starting to open up a little bit. In our example, it's as if we are still tracking the sound of David Gilmour's electric guitar that initially sounded somewhat basic, but it now seems a little more interesting and complex. While you're not totally certain how complex things actually are, there is something outside the fundamentals that are starting to take shape. Now, keep staring at that little blue ornament, folks. Keep focusing, keep looking at it, and now, what started with the basic tone of a distorted electric guitar is now really taking shape. You can not only hear the fundamental tone of the guitar, but you begin to realize that guitar has a voice of its own. Meaning, it's not just a distorted electric guitar. It is, in fact, David Gilmour's Black Stratocaster, and holy smokes, it sounds glorious. As the solo plays, you can hear the sound of the reverb that wraps around each of the notes, the decay of each note being rendered, and you are now realizing that guitar's tone tone is actually three-dimensional, meaning what sounded like it was just another guitar in a mix now has space that surrounds it both left, right, forward, and back. All right, folks, last change. Go ahead and refocus on the little blue ornament and stay focused. Keep looking at it. Hang in there. We're almost done. And now, my fine friends, we have finally arrived. Sure, we can only focus on one thing at a time, but when the surrounding structure of what we are focused on is clear, that one thing that we have been listening to becomes something much more meaningful. We started with a basic distorted electric guitar, but now we have ended up with David Gilmour's Black Stratocaster plugged into his Big Muff, which is of course plugged into his high watt DR-103 head, and it is freaking cranked. We can easily identify the fundamental tone, harmonic structure, decay of each note, and yes folks, the sound of the room where it was recorded. The voice of the guitar is three-dimensional. It has its own unique voice and is completely free of anything that would ever suggest this is just another distorted electric guitar. With everything in focus, we have it all, and even better, nothing is difficult to pick out. So yeah, what started as a little blue ornament with lots of stuff out of focus around it is now a complete picture with lots of details and information that we literally couldn't see to begin with. And this, my friends, setting all hyperbole to the side, is exactly what the Holo Audio Maydac does. And now that I have your undivided attention, let's dive in. The Holo Audio Maydac is the flagship offering which can be purchased from Kitsune 
Hi-Fi, I think I'm saying that right, finally. The DAC is an R2R ladder DAC and can be purchased in three different configurations or levels, if you will. Starting with the base offering L1 at $37.98, L2 at $42.98, or KTE version at $49.98, each configuration offers different components and upgrade options that you can learn about on their site. The unit I'll be covering today is the KTE version, which is their top tier level model with all the optional upgrades they have to throw into the mix. Hands selected modules, KT exclusive caps, holo audio caps, DAC module exclusive with cover shields, silver wiring, red nano fuse, and many more mods and improvements. The bottom line is this, this is their big boy. This is the one where they're just throwing the whole kitchen sink at this guy is what they're doing, including a spatula made out of silver. I think it's included in there. That's a bad joke. One thing that is not being talked about enough that I refuse to let slip by without mentioning is what you plug into a DAC matters. And it matters a lot. For the longest time, I used to use my MacBook Pro as my source, thinking ones and zeros are all the same, and it doesn't matter because the DAC is going to fix everything. Folks, the truth is, I honestly believe that is a load of turds and don't for one second fall for that mentality and components yes even cabling upstream can and will often make some differences in your rig and maybe more than you might expect in this review and part of my reference rig is a wonderful sounding annuals zenith which i'll leave a link down below for our thoughts on that machine no affiliation i'm not being paid to say anything like that anyhow what's upstream will absolutely make a difference with what's heard downstream. I promise you it does. Second, you know what's coming and you know I'm going to keep saying it, so either it's a conspiracy or perhaps maybe just maybe I'm onto something. The quickest way to throw away everything amazing about this DAC or any amazing DAC for that matter is to slam your speakers up against the wall. Use LOTS, which is loudspeaker optimization techniques for soundstage and prepare yourself for the biggest upgrade you could ever attain and best of all, it's free. If I haven't made myself clear by now, let me try to put the nail in the coffin. Literally, everything I'll be saying in this review would be a lost, smeary mess of nonsense in the event where I didn't practice what I preach and my speakers were slammed against the wall. I know because I've tried it. So let that sink in and let's get this show on the road. I don't know why I'm doing that. That's a weird gesture. Taking a look at the Holo May, the first feature we can tackle is the fact that this unit is a two chassis design. The DAC and all components surrounding the DAC are placed inside the top chassis while the power supply is housed in the bottom. Getting this out of the way quickly, I've tried the DAC and power supply stacked on top of each other as well as some distance apart, and I can't tell any mind-blowing differences worth chatting about. In any event, there is a umbilical cord that attaches the two chassis together, and while we are looking at the back of the unit, let's run through some of the connections. The power supply back panel layout is simple enough that to the right, there is an IEC plug for power and a rocker switch which serves as turning the unit on. The umbilical cord attaches with a Limo-style connector with a gazillion pens, but don't worry, it can only attach one way and it has a little red dot indicator so you can't jack anything up. Inside the power supply you will find high performance multi-stage regulation circuit using Rubicon ZLH caps, Panasonic FC, Vishe caps, or L2 KTE models with the exclusive Holo Audio branded caps. In the case of the KTE model like we are reviewing now, you will find unique custom proprietary caps to replace the Vishe caps. Also for those with a quick eye, Yes, the May DAC is a dual mono design through and through. Each channel is powered by its own dedicated O-type flat wire transformer, which is found in all three models. Taking a look at the business end of the DAC chassis to the left and right of each side are the outputs, which again, mimic the dual mono design. With each model, users have the option of running the DAC either single-ended or balanced, and yes, the May DAC is indeed 
fully balanced topology. As far as digital inputs are concerned, the Maydac offers an enhanced USB Titanius 2.0 circuit and Kaison Industrial High Retention USB Connector. This connector makes use of proprietary in-house firmware with ultra low noise latency performance and ultra low noise voltage regulation. Also included, the Maydac offers RCA coaxial, BNC coaxial, AES EBU, optical, and two I2S inputs. Last, all the digital inputs on the Maydac support DSD and POP. Popping the hood on the chassis, we can see again the dual mono layout, and of course the heartbeat of the DAC, which is a resistor to resistor ladder modules. For those drooling over the words hand selected modules, let me ease your mind by assuring you the drool is certainly appropriate. These hand selected modules are picked as being special not because they are dipped in snake oil, but actually measure the best and offer the highest dynamic range. All right, guys, so here is the deal. Many reviewers will eventually get their grubby hands on the stack and will be able to chat about its capabilities with DSD and high resolution playback. That's great, and you should certainly hear what they have to say. However, if you are hoping that I am that reviewer, I hate to break it to you, but it's not gonna happen. Instead, I'm going to most likely get myself into trouble, this is NRD after all, by telling you that my experience thus far with digital playback goes like this. To hear everything I believe that is amazing about this DAC, literally everything, 16 bits, 44.1, is all you need. What? And love. Love is all you need and 16, 44.1. Yep. Now, don't get me wrong here, I certainly used this DAC connected to Rune and made my way through long and extensive high resolution libraries, which all sounded great. But after side-by-side -side comparisons with good old fashioned CDs, all the greatest moments with this DAC and impressions we're gonna be talking about were discovered when simply playing back the direct rip from the Zenith. What were those greatest moments and what did they sound like? I'm glad you asked. Before we get started, if you are hoping I'm going to chat about the fundamentals of this DAC's performance, meaning bass, mid-range, and treble extension, I'll rip off the Band-Aid right now and let you know it ain't gonna happen. For some of you, this will be a disappointment, but let me explain where I am coming from. It has been my honest experience that with everything worth chatting about when it comes to a DAC's performance, it is outside of its tone capabilities. I would even take it a step further that if a DAC was altering the fundamentals in any fashion, that DAC is probably best to be used as a paperweight. The performance or lack thereof that I'm interested in has to do with its ability to reconstruct what we hear from the music that was once ones and zeros, and it has nothing to do with the fundamentals. If you're new to this channel and never heard the words time domain, it's everything that happens in time after the fundamental hit. Think of it like the decay of a reverb trail, but it's more than that as the time domain exists throughout the entire frequency band. For those who have spent time listening to great analog rigs, you already know what this sounds like as it's one of the first things bad digital rigs get wrong. Let me stop right there because I know that comment is going to ruffle some digital feathers. It's not that you have less detail in the time domain than a lot of great analog rigs, it's that your detail sounds like turds wrapped in razor blades. I guess that's not going to help if you were getting a little bit grumpy. Being specific, not only am I able to track the decay of symbols better than other DACs that I've spent time with, but I'm able to discern the pitch differences of those symbols. In other words, as one fades away, I understand the other continues and I'm clearly able to hear they are indeed separate from each other. While this might be more in the category of harmonic structure, I can't get over the fact each and every time I fire up the Maydac, I am greeted with different unique decay rates of each symbol as opposed to all of them bleeding into one or a pile of snakes hissing at you, which doesn't sound good. Even tracks that I've heard a million times over and over again from the CD cut are extracting details in decay that I've never noticed before 
the Maydak. As an example, I made my way through Dark Side of the Moon. And on the track Money, I was not only able to hear David's guitar work like I've heard a million times before, but I was able to finally hear and distinguish some of the delay tricks he used like I've only experienced on the best analog rigs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is some crazy delay stuff that he did on that particular track. And when you hear the decay properly on it, it's so freaking good. In other words, with the Maydak, it's as if these missing puzzle pieces are finally put back in place where they belong. Now, hearing something that was recorded analog and eventually mastered for digital is not the only place where the Maydak shines. Similar as to what I love so much about the Denifreps Terminator, which is a great sounding DAC, everything the May touches seems to be blessed with the grace of analog. Sharp and harsh edges that make their way to our eardrums are smoother and at the same time without an ounce of resolution being lost in the great exchange. Remember when I was chatting about bad digital rigs getting things wrong? This is the exact opposite of that. In other words, the Maydak gets digital right and it does it with ease. So I wanna take a moment and express what the Maydac is able to do in terms of layering and what I'll call depth perception. Starting with the overused and tired example of pitch black backgrounds, I remember talking to Tim from Kitsune Hi-Fi and he mentioned that on the phone, this is literally like the best measuring R2R ladder DAC in Stereophile's history. And one of those measurements is expressed in noise floor, or in the case of the May DAC, the lack thereof. When a DAC is quiet, and I believe the separation of the power supply might be one of the reasons why this is happening, it allows you to recognize if and when there is pitch black background. Now, with the May DAC, because it renders things in the time domain so well, Whatever is being played in the music is now suspended in space. Of course, I'll bring up lots and speaker placement as the first thing you would need to do to achieve what we're gonna be talking about. But when you do, let me explain what's gonna happen. So there is a song called Last Appeal from the album Heretics by the Toadies. The album offers stripped down acoustic versions of their songs. And in this song, which starts with like a B3 organ being panned left to right, eventually offers a beautifully recorded tambourine. Now, this single tambourine serves as an important function in the recording as it defines the space of the room you are about to hear. Meaning, we have the organ and the bass being played, but from nothing or pitch black backgrounds behind and beyond the organ and bass is this tambourine. Folks, when that tambourine lights up this space, and specifically with the Maydak in the driver's seat. I can honestly say, and this is the biggest takeaway of the review, I've never heard this type of layering in depth with any other DAC. And I have never heard it rendered with this kind of depth and decay structure. I've tried it with the Terminator. I've tried it with the shit Bifrost too. I've tried it with the built-in DAC from my trusty Leo. I've tried it with every DAC that I can get my hands on. And in the end, there can only be one king. And that king is sitting off to my left shoulder here. For lovers of soundstage depth and width, I am going to declare the bar has been set and it has been set very high with the Holo Audio Maydac. Here's the thing. $5,000, that's a lot of money. I can't afford this stack. I can't buy this, right? There's no horse for me in this race. I wish I could. I'd have to sell some stuff to make it happen and I'm considering it because I, I can't let this go back. It's that darn good. What we're gonna get down to is there's gonna be some folks that will show up and they're gonna share their thoughts and opinion that ah, I think the Terminator might be better. Or I think this might be better. And I welcome the exchange in the comments section. I, I welcome your thoughts and your opinion, but before you leave a comment, I need you to answer this question. Are you listening for the things that I've been talking about? Because if not, then we might be able to break bread and you might hear something that I'm just not quite frankly hearing. 
But if we're talking about the things that I'm talking about, stuff in the time domain, decay structure, harmonic structure, all of these things, air, extension, depth, layering, soundstage, I think we have the new king. And the new king has been officially crowned from New Record Day. The Holo Audio May DAC is, it's my favorite DAC so far in my adventure with DACs. It is stunning. I am curious as to whether you need to go as high as the KTE version. I don't know. I can't answer that question. I know they're using a ton of silver inside this guy. I have my own opinion about throwing silver at things and it's risky. It has been my experience that that is a risk. And so I wish I had maybe the level two to do some comparisons and to find out what's going on there. I also wish that I had the spring deck, which is the single chassis design to say, how big of a difference are we talking about getting into the May deck? But nonetheless, it's the real deal. No horse in this race. I'm not being paid to say anything here. Tim hasn't slipped me a $20 bill. Nothing like that. If you are looking for the subtleties, that's the word. The subtleties that is often missed. That's your guy. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.